Hello everybody and welcome to today's Restful Beginners Painting class. If this is your first time joining us or maybe you need a refresher, this time is all about growth and skill building. This is not about productivity, this is not about perfection. But in this hour, we are going to stretch and strengthen our creative muscles in a way that hopefully brings you energy rather than detracting from your energy. So for the next hour, I want you to go ahead and take your stressors, your pressures, any anxieties that you are carrying with you and just put those off to the side. For this next hour, we are going to focus and dwell on something lovely. We are going to draw lines and mix colors and do our best to recreate what's in front of us. In today's class, we're gonna be continuing our Kitchen Herb series as we learn to paint Baby Dill from life. It's gonna be fun and I hope that you enjoy today's class, but before we get started, if you can, go ahead, like this video and subscribe to my channel so that you can be notified whenever I make more classes, but it also helps me to continue to make these classes for free for everybody. So let's go ahead and look at our supplies and then we will get started. All right, everybody, so as we get started with today's class, I want to first show everyone what we need for today. So, as per usual, we are working with a primary paint palette, and so we need a blue, yellow, red, and then white for mixing. You need a surface to paint on. I am using this thick grade watercolor paper today, but you can use a canvas or really whatever you have lying around. It's whatever works. You'll also need a pencil, mechanical, whatever kind you have, it works and then a paintbrush about the size of a pinky nail to paint with, as well as a rag to dry off with, water for mixing, and then whatever treat you want. Today I have kombucha. So get yourself something to drink, get yourself something to eat, and get all of your supplies ready. Go ahead and pause this video, get everything that you need ready, and then when you're ready, just push play and we'll continue on with our class. So the first thing that we do in every class is we observe what we are drawing. So obviously today we are doing baby dill. And so I had this, if you've ever wondered how I pick what we're going to paint, especially with the herbs, it's basically what I'm cooking with that week. So this week I'm cooking with some baby dill. And so that's what we have. And so I'm trying to bring it up close so you can see it, but my camera is having a hard time focusing on what is some very spindly, and thin leaves. So if you can see, we have a lime green center stalk with lots of fingers, small fingers, shooting off of main branches. So we're gonna have some fun with that. It'll be a nice, simple, easy way to paint. We've also got some lighter junctures, which you can't see. Dang the camera, I'm sorry, y'all. Um, we've got some lighter spindles, some more yellowy green on the leaves themselves and then some moments of a truer blue-green. So we'll get to play with that. It's gonna be a nice simple class, nice easy class. Um, we'll get started with simple drawings and then we'll really bounce into that painting. I am not sure yet if we're gonna utilize our red, but we'll just get going and see. There are a few leaves that are more brown that we could add some red into, but we'll just see what we need to do. So let's go ahead and get started. Grab your pencils. And the first thing we're going to do is draw this nice swirly S-curve of a center stalk. So as we've done before, you can choose what composition you want. Just know that where you draw these base lines are going to be what's going to take up your painting. So if you want this to fill your whole page, you need to make sure that this top line and this bottom line fit accordingly. Now, if you've done the Rosemary class, you know I'm going to give you the option to write the name along the bottom, and I'm going to show you how to do that. So if you want to leave space for that, keep that in mind as well. I'm going to try and fill up my whole page just like this is laid out, and then we'll keep going. So we're going to start towards the center, and I'm bringing it around this curve right here, and then I'm sharply going to pull it back this direction. around and then angle it nice and sharp back here so that's pretty close to what we have over here if you have taken classes with me before you know that I am a big fan of it does not have to look exactly like this no one else is gonna see what your source material was 
and at the end of the day if it looks a little bit different we're just gonna say that you painted a different bill so it's really not a big deal that it's exact we are just getting the main rules that we see in front of us of what makes dill look like dill so that is our main center stock and that's the main thing we're going to be drawing today but i'm going to go ahead and just map out where some of these leaf structures are going to be and then we're going to have some fun with a nice sharp painting tool and just getting those little flicks of lines in the right spot so i know that there's a bunch right here so i'm just going to do a few main lines coming off and what these are going to serve as is let me see i don't know if you can see this um you see right here, we've got this main line coming up, but then off that we have smaller lines shooting out. So we're just going to draw the main lines and then we will paint in the lines that shoot out. So just drawing a few of these main lines, I've got two in that cluster up top. We've got another one coming out here. I've got another one coming here. Then let's see, we've got one coming from behind over here. And so you can see I'm changing my angles, right? So I'm not doing all of them coming out perfectly vertical or horizontal. I am angling it out according to what I see over here. So some are at a sharper angle, some are at a wider angle. Adding that variation in is going to do wonders in making your plant look more lifelike and realistic. So I'm adding a cluster here that I see. And y'all remember at any time, this is a recording, so you can pause me. If I am talking too fast or moving too fast, please feel free to pause me, catch up, and then keep going. So, got a cluster of lines coming out this way, and then it kind of goes bare for a while, which I like. I think that adds a natural appeal. So then I'm gonna let it come bare, come just beyond this turn, and then I'm gonna pull one coming out this direction and then I'm going to pull a few coming out this direction. And I'm just going to do, yeah, those two and one more. All right. So there we go. That is our drawing for today. Nice and simple. You can put your pencils down, put those away. We're going to move on to mixing our colors. So obviously this is a green plant, so we are going to be using predominantly green today. So for our green colors, we're going to take a little bit of blue, a little bit of yellow, and mix those together. And as you can see, I'm not mixing all of my colors at once. I'm taking little smidges and pulling them from the pile and mixing in the center. What that does is it keeps us from wasting pointless amounts of paint. We don't need all of it to mix at the same time. We just need to mix as we go. So I mix those two together. And if I need a little bit more blue, I'll add a little more blue, a little bit more yellow, I'll do the same. And so that way you can keep adding without taking an infinity and getting so frustrated with not getting the right colors. You just add a little bit at a time. Kind of like if you were cooking and you kind of did salt to taste, you add a little bit at first or like adding some cayenne pepper, you add a little bit, you taste it, add a little bit more, you taste it. It's the same principle. So just kind of add as you need until you get the right color. I'm happy with this color. It's a nice true green. You can kind of see it next to the actual plant and it's about right. So I've mixed that color up nice and good. My brush is nice and it's a good thickness right now. And so I'm gonna do the main stalk just like that coming down. So we've talked before, I'm gonna plant my wrist on the page and drag out my paintbrush. That way I have less likelihood of hovering and kind of messing up and blotching it. If you want to add a little bit of water, you can add just a drop of water, which will make it glide easier if you are also working on paper. So starting at the top, just carefully glide it down. If it's not perfect, that is okay can always throw some leaves over top, right? All right, just pull it nice and steady. And you can see my fingers are not moving. So my fingers are stationary. My shoulder and my elbow are pulling my wrist along the page 
slowly down as my hand holds the paintbrush at the same distance from the paper. This is a trick where if once you get it, it is really going to upgrade the quality of the paintings that you create. Okay, so that's what I have right now. And you can see mine is not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but it doesn't matter because we are going to add so many spindles and stuff on top, it's not gonna be super visible. Now, what we are going to do before we get to those spindles is we're gonna go ahead and shade this. So I have this color that I already mixed. I'm gonna pull a little bit more white, in, I mean a little bit more yellow in. Getting ahead of myself. A little more yellow and then I'm gonna add a touch of white. Nice. Okay. So I am going to flatten my brush now. It's gotten really gunky. So we've done this before, where I take my cloth, I wrap it around my paintbrush, and I have the thick part sandwiched in. So sandwiched in and pull, and that sharpens the line of my brush so well. So now I can take this highlight color that we mixed, this is the color, you can see it at the tip, a nice lime green, and I'm choosing a side right now, the left side, I'm going to come alongside very carefully. Well, let's be real, this is very small, so if you can make it all fit on the left side, great, if not, that's okay too. The two colors next to each other will give the illusion of three-dimensionality. All right, and just pull alongside. It doesn't have to be one fluid line, it can be multiple lines. They're gonna be covered over in some spots. There you go. All right, so that's mine. You can see it up close a little bit. You just see a little bit of that play of the two colors, and that's all we needed. Okay, so I'm gonna add a little bit more blue back into here. That's not necessary, I'm just choosing to do that. Okay, and now with our thin brushes, we are going to outline our pencil drawn lines. So just try and stay as thin as possible, which means putting as little weight as possible on this. doing great. Nice and thin lines. I got ambitious this week and decided to make my own ranch dressing from scratch. Don't ask me why, but one of the ingredients was dill, so that's why we're doing dill today because I happen to have it in my fridge. Okay, right here, I don't know if you can see it, I did not follow my pencil line perfectly, but that does not bother me. I will go back and I will cover it with paint somewhere else. I'm not going to thicken that line because it's a good thickness. So if you've done the same thing in other areas, don't worry about it, don't stress over it, don't try and thicken that line, let it be. You can either go back and erase the pencil line later or you can add a spindle once we get to that stage. So just finish up, putting in your lines. This is very technical with a very thin brush, so it's important that you get that skill of planting your wrist and dragging your brush rather than trying to manipulate everything with your fingers. Okay, so that is that stage. I'm gonna take a quick sip of my drink and then we will keep moving. Alrighty, <clears throat> we're gonna continue on. Ooh, I got something in my throat. Okay, so I'm just mixing a little bit more of that color, dragging some blue, dragging some green. Oh, 
I'm gonna pull a little bit of water in just to make sure it glides well and then a little bit of white. Okay, I'm happy with that color, but now we really need a fine tune brush and so pull it nice and tight. There you go, so you can see a nice sharp line. And now we are just gonna start adding our details, adding our lines. So I'm going to drop just like that. So what I did is I just added a little line, just like that. I just pushed and pulled just a tinch. So we're gonna do that same thing. Just do that along nice and thin. And that's working for me if I do it in little clusters of three. So what I did right here is I did one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So if you do that, that will help out a lot in getting these lines in the right spot. One, two, three, doing them at different lengths. I'm just pulling them nice and long. This one is longer. So you see this spot right here? It's lots of long ones, so I'm just pulling from the base and flicking out. Nice and simple. The main key with this is that we are just getting these thin lines added in. And you don't want them to be too uniform, so I'll show you. You don't want, you don't want this, right? Instead, we want to keep things varied, like over here. So a long one in the center, and then some clustered together. And so the way I'm gonna fix this right here now that I was too uniformed on, is I'm gonna bring a line in the middle. I'm gonna add one coming this way. I'm gonna add another one in here. And so we just don't want it to look too uniform, too planned out. So just add your lines in. And remember, this is not about getting the perfect painting the first time. So if you want to use this painting as your practice, you want to try out different techniques, see what leads you like best, do that. Just say that this is not going to be your keeper and that for this little bit of time you are going to practice out different ways to make dill leaves and see which ones work. I think you might find that as you do that you're going to end up with the variation that you want and end up with a much better picture in the end. But it's not about that. This is all about trying different things, learning how to use your brush, learning how to mix colors and just getting comfortable with this material as we stretch these creative muscles and get them stronger. So just flick these painting colors on and use the lines that you drew beforehand as your guidelines that you're building off of. Nice and simple. You see I started adding these flicks in and I'll show you on my hand how I'm doing that. So I press down right here, and then I very quickly flick it up. And so that's creating that nice feathered brush appearance on those guys, if you want to try that technique out. So I'm keeping moving. And you can add new structures. You can stay with the old ones. Build this plant out as you want to. We're just painting a lot of green lines right now. So there is really no pressure 
and how you do that. As you need more paint, mix it. You know the colors. It's just mixing that blue and that yellow and a little bits of white until you're happy with the color you get. The more variation of color, the better. So don't worry about getting the exact color again. When we have those variations, it makes it look more natural and less manufactured. So I'm just going back now. I've finished up hitting all of these for the first time, but you'll notice mine's not as full as this one is. So now that I've done my initial structures, I'm going back in and adding in leaves where I think they need to be. So I'll mix some more color and just add as it needs to be added. Flatten your brush as you need to. Add water so that it flows well as you need to. As you keep doing this, you're gonna get the feel for when it needs water and when it's good. So it's just a matter of doing this more often and getting a feel for the consistency of paint you like to work with. I don't think there's any right answer there. I think it's just what you're comfortable with and how your brush moves well for you. So flattening my brush. And just adding in detail. It's okay if it overlaps. If you go over that main stem, that's honestly a good thing. It adds to that three-dimensional effect. Just be careful about, you know this before, but just be careful about dipping your paint or dipping your wrist in wet paint. If you do, you can always turn that into a leaf or you can go back later and paint over it in white. If you've done this with me before, you will know that it's happened many a time to me and it is nothing to throw a painting over for. You just make it work. This is filling out nicely. Nice thin lines. This is lovely, y'all. Okay, I'm about happy with mine. Yeah, 
yeah, I'm pretty satisfied with this. Okay, y'all keep working, keep pedaling, and in a moment I will come back and give y'all an option for how to add the name at the bottom. So keep working for now. In just a moment, I'll come back and give you that option to add that name. All right, everybody. So for our option to kind of spruce this up a little bit, we're going to do the same thing that we did for our rosemary painting. And so what I've done is I've printed off the name Baby Dill in a font that I like and a size that I like. And we're going to put that onto this painting just to kind of elevate it and make it look a little bit nicer. But we recognize that not all of us are excellent at penmanship, we're not all calligraphers, and so I have this little cheat for us. So I've got a regular ballpoint pen right now, and I'm gonna place this on my page. You can kind of see how I can see through this. I'm gonna place it on my page in the place that I want, where I want it centered on the actual plant. And then I'm gonna use this ballpoint pen to trace out the letters exactly where I want them. And I'm bearing down hard. And so the reason why we're using a ballpoint pen is we can bear down really hard without worrying about ink transferring through or without worrying about maybe the paper ripping like it would with like a pencil. So follow the lines very carefully, take your time and just place it where you want it to with a firm bearing. Okay, so you can't really see the detail, but it's right there. I can see it from here. And now we're gonna take a regular pen, a Sharpie, or any kind of artist pen that you have, and we're gonna trace it carefully on here. So once you finish, go ahead and touch up any spaces that you feel need a little extra work. So I'm just going to just edit a little bit, touch up the areas where I feel like didn't go as smoothly as I wanted, and just make it look nice and finished. Okay, so this is my painting finished up. I'm really pleased with it. I hope that you're pleased with yours. If you have any questions on like what font to use or what size I'm using, just hit me up in the comments and I'll be happy to help you out. But once again, here's the painting up close. And yeah, happy painting. All right, everybody, that is a wrap on today's class. If you are not finished with this yet, that is totally okay. Keep working, keep playing, keep messing around with it. And please be sure, if you have any questions, comment in the comments below or DM me on social media. If you find me on Instagram, you can always send me a DM, show me the picture you're working with, and I would be happy to answer any questions you have about finishing this painting on Baby Dill. Um, yeah, that's all I got for you, but I hope that you had fun today. I hope today was restful for you. I hope you love what you've created and that you join me again. If you haven't already, please like this video. Please share it with a friend or family member who you think could enjoy an hour of creativity. And please subscribe to my channel so that you can see these videos as I make them, but also so that I can monetize and get to a place where I can continue to make these videos for free for everybody. 
that's all for today, but I hope you have a lovely week and I hope to see you next week.